Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Tuesday, May 28th, 2024. So to start off this video, here's a look at the latest GOES-16 visible true color satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. I really like using his satellite images because they show a lot of good detail on what is going on right now in the Atlantic Basin. So to start off this, we're looking at a couple of tropical waves that are in place right now. We have a one tropical wave that is located right now over the central and southwestern Caribbean. We also have another tropical wave that is dubbed down there in the very deep tropics south of the 10 degree north latitude line. This came off of Africa last night and this is going to continue to move generally westward at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Now while these tropical waves do not look to develop in, into anything significant, what it's going to mean is there's going to be a lot of rain and a tangled, jumbled mess of thunderstorms that could bring a lot of heavy rain, gusty winds at times, and some flood concerns to these islands, especially Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, also for Bermuda, not Bermuda, uh, for uh, Puerto Rico, and for Jamaica, including for the ABC Islands. Boy, I drew a mouth right there, the two eyes and a mouth there. <laughs> Hilarious, right? So we can see there is tropical wave number one. Here's tropical wave number two. And again, this is going to keep things fairly wet and above average over the next five to 10 days. Also, another thing that I wanted to point out in this satellite imagery is we're not seeing a whole lot of Saharan dust coming off of Africa like we typically would in late May. And that's partially because of the weak Azores high out here, not really well established yet. And as long as this remains weak, we're not going to be seeing a whole lot of dust, which I will show you clearly that we won't have a whole lot of dust to contend with at least over the next week and a half. So when we do take a look at the latest National Hurricane Center graphical tropical weather outlook over the next seven days, there is no tropical activity whatsoever, which is good news for a lot of you that are headed maybe if you're going on vacation to say the dominican republic puerto rico the azores islands uh or which is are up here bermuda and including for the leeward windward islands trinidad and tobago looking good jamaica looks good other than again some inclement weather over the next five to ten days just part of some disorganized showers and thunderstorms that can bring enhanced rainfall to those areas but otherwise looking good over on the Pacific side, looking also really good. Thumbs up, seven up on that. Nothing in the next seven days over the next week, which is good news for a lot of you too. If you're traveling south to Mexico, looks pretty good. If you're going down towards Venezuela, looks good as well. Nothing to be concerned about for the time being. But we know how quick that will change, right? but mainly for the Atlantic. More on that in a little bit. So now with that being said, let's take a look at our latest GFS model. This is the global forecasting system, the American model that we like to look at in these videos. This is a forecast model predicting the future, what might happen, right? So this is for May 28th on your Tuesday. And as we can see here, we do have a couple of high pressure systems, the Azores high and portions of the Bermuda high here with a low pressure squashed in between. Here is that tropical wave right down here that we have on satellite on tropical tidbits that is headed generally this way. We also have another tropical wave that is dubbed over here in the central northwestern southwestern Caribbean. All right, so players on the field is what we're seeing and not much Saharan dust because those trade winds are not very strong for the time being. So let's go forward. So let's take this into, say, uh, Wednesday afternoon, and we can see still nothing much going on. Again, that tropical wave still down there. Some inclement weather, of course, over Venezuela, portions of Central America. And then nothing really is on the docket until we get into Saturday. That's when things get a little bit, bit more interesting. We have the remnants of this tropical wave right here. But look at, we have this jumbled, tangled mess here. A lot of showers, thunderstorms that are anticipated over the Dominican Republic, even for Jamaica. Okay, Saturday morning, June the 1st. Happy June, folks, over there. Going to start off really wet and kind of inclement. 
Now, the GFS, you know how that goes sometimes, likes to do some crazy stuff, wants a bona fide tropical storm. Literally, come on. It's probably not going to happen, but if it does happen, we'll have to track that um, while I'm on vacation, right? Probably have to make videos on it. But in the meantime, just a lot of showers, thunderstorms that are going to continue over that region. And then still continuing all the way into Monday and Tuesday next week on the 3rd and 4th day of June. And then this kind of goes out in, uh, to sea with a really weak Bermuda high. Uh, actually, Bermuda high and Azores high. In fact, not really existent. That means this Heron dust is going to be very weak and non-existent. And we'll show you that here in a little bit. And then look at I mean, this is very weak trade winds. There's nothing out here. And this is really troubling because this portion of the Atlantic is going to continue to rapidly warm as we go into the month of June. And with sea surface temperatures, two to three degrees, at least four to six degrees Fahrenheit above normal, this is really going to add to more problems and I don't like to cause any fear or scare on that, but weak winds over warm waters mean the waters are able to warm up. That latent heat is not being able to get extracted out of the ocean. And this continues all the way through the end of the forecast. So definitely um, showers and thunderstorms over the Caribbean over the next 5 to 10 days. And then, of course, we trade winds, not much Saharan dust to speak of. Now, speaking of Saharan dust, are we seeing anything significant coming off of Africa? Fortunately, not in the next 5 to 10 days at all. We're looking at very low dust amounts. And when I mean by low, these different colors illustrate the density of dust. So the... Purple colors indicate more dust concentrations. Now, when we usually get into the yellows, the white colors here, like over Africa, that's when the Saharan dust concentrations are more greater. And in other words, this is below average dust coverage. This is nothing significant at all. This is not going to affect the sea surface temperatures by any mean at all. This is going to allow a lot of surface heating on the ocean and allow those waters to really warm up further. And with the lack of Saharan, Saharan dust uh, ending May into early June, as we can see here, as we zoom in this image, you can see the two different images. I mean, there's just barely anything out here. In fact, very low concentrations over Trinidad and Tobago over the next 10 days. And you could barely find any specks here over Africa that have very high um, dust concentrations and that's likely due to a lot of wet conditions recently over Africa that have allowed the dust to get suppressed in these areas so uh, good news for a lot of people that live over or on the west coast of Africa not going to see much dust because that's that causes a lot of health problems but the bad news is that a lot of these sea surface temperatures are going to really warm up in a hurry with the lack of trade winds and a lack of Saharan dust that would otherwise allow outgoing wave uh, out, outgoing radiation from the sun to get back into outer space. It doesn't hit the ocean very well when you have a lot of Saharan dust. All right, long wave radiation that is. So now another thing I like to look at is sea surface temperatures over the Gulf of Mexico, and they are definitely warm. We have now pretty much, for the most part up here, only a little area remains of 27 degree Celsius water. That's roughly about 81 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So really losing that. And now the entire Gulf has 28 degrees Celsius or about 83 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit waters whereas look at this the the bay of youth here the island of youth even 32 celsius there's a little bit of an island there it's very barely to be noticeable but on the chart down here 32 celsius that's where it's coming from so i mean that is excruciatingly warm and if we get any storm that moves over this area like we did with ian it could really pop off really quickly also, the shelf waters off the southern Florida coast, really, really warm. Like Key West, sea surface temperatures of about 31 Celsius. So that's about 86, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, very warm. And then down here in the Bay of Campeche, 30 to 31 degrees Celsius waters. 
very warm, like bathtub warm. And it's going to only get warmer from here because, again, we're only in late May. We're still in May. We're technically, at least right now, we are about three to four days away from the start of the season of the Atlantic. So, yeah, we have a long way to go. So, sea surface temperatures right now across the entire Atlantic, this line that I have highlighted really demarcates where the 80 degree Fahrenheit isotherm line is. And that is really far north, almost 30 degrees north in latitude already. I mean, a, almost a month ago, it was just down here. So it really has moved north pretty quickly recently. And that is because of the lackening of trade winds. We don't have a lot of that this year. And that's going to really lead to a further warming. Very warm again over the Caribbean, 28 uh, about 30 to 32 Celsius waters. That is extreme. That is very concerning. Now, when we take a look at our oceanic anomalies here, sea surface temperatures, definitely well above average, in, uh, up to as much as 4 to 6 Fahrenheit above average here in the central Atlantic. May, in the main development region, we're running about 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit above average for this time of the year including for the Gulf of Mexico and portions of Florida, running as warm as 6 to 8 degrees above normal with sea surface temperatures in Fahrenheit. So that is definitely a concern, and that's really going to add to a lot to what's coming this Atlantic hurricane season. So now, another thing I like to look at is the upper ocean heat content map. This is my favorite parameter that I always like to use. All right, and what this illustrates is, in simple terms, upper ocean heat content is well above average for this time of the year. We're well ahead. I mean, again, your 30 degree iso, uh, uh, not isotherm, your 30 degree latitude line is right here. And we're already, I mean, this, the very far north of the nose of this is almost there. And it's only late May. And then over here in the Caribbean, we are seeing some very high numbers. I mean, reds? Are you kidding me? We got some red colors over Jamaica, over the Cayman Islands with the loop current here nosing into the, the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. Very warm already in the uh, eastern Caribbean basin. So what I'm telling you here is this does not lead to hurricanes. I want to emphasize that, but this is octane fuel. This is juice. This is gasoline that allows, if we get a tropical wave that moves through this area with light tr uh, trade winds, you know, the steering current's not really strong, of course, right? Because hurricanes typically develop when it's only going like at 5 to 10 miles an hour. But when you have light shear, lots of moisture, lots of latent heat release, things could get very intense very quickly with such high upper ocean heat content. So now take a look at our 80 degree Fahrenheit isotherm. And in other words, the 26 degree. How far down does this expand? Okay, the deeper this is, the more upper ocean heat content you're going to get. So in this case, it is very deep. Right now in this whole entire area, we're looking at the 80 degree Fahrenheit isotherm extending at least 400 to 500 feet down. That's very far below the surface of the ocean. That's not shallow at all, okay? And so you could imagine that, wow, 80 degrees, that's needed for powerful hurricanes, extends that isotherm line, goes all the way down to 500 feet down below the surface of the ocean. That's the concern here, is if we get anything that moves and takes full advantage of these waters, it's going to not end very well. It really isn't. And that's why I'm here preparing for you all for this hurricane season to come, especially if you're on Trinidad and Tobago. A lot of these leeward and windward islands over here, including Puerto Rico, um, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica especially, my goodness. I mean, those waters over there are on fire, very far above average. And it, again, it's really not going to take much with the background state when it comes around in late June, 
could things could really pop off really quickly. Well, with that being said, I sure hope you did enjoy today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Tuesday, May 28th, 2024. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. If you haven't already, slap that subscribe button, folks. You guys are really awesome. We're already at 20,100 subscribers and can't do this without all of your guys' support. So be sure to share, like, and subscribe and get this out to your friends and family right away. Because again, I will be doing a lot more of these discussions in the months ahead as we get deeper and deeper and deeper into the Atlantic hurricane season. But anyways... Thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more in the next couple of days. I'm hoping, because I'm going on vacation tomorrow, but I'll keep you guys updated when necessary.